In this video, we're going to look at naming cycloalkanes. So this is pretty similar to naming the alkanes that we've looked at in a previous video. Uh, in this case, uh, the carbons just form a cyclic structure. So just like in the naming of the straight chain branched alkanes, the first thing we need to do is determine the length of the ring. This then provides the base name for the alkane, and then the only difference between this and naming the straight chain ones is we just add cyclo to the start of the name. Then we look and identify each substituent, and then we have to worry about the numbering. Now, if there's just one substituent, we don't need a number because we just assume that whatever position it's on, we'll just call that one. So, because the one is understood, if there's just one substituent, we don't need a number. If there are two substituents, then whichever substituent comes first alphabetically gets to be number one, and then the other substituent gets to be whatever it is. If there are three or more substituents, then we want to put the numbers in such that the total numbers of the substituents comes out as small as possible. Now, just like in naming the straight chain alkanes, we need to know what the prefixes are. I've already talked about this a little bit on the previous slide, so I'm not going to go into it a whole lot. Same thing on the next two slides. Uh, I'm going to show you some of the names of the common su substituents, but I'm not going to go into much detail. I'm just sort of including it for completeness. So here are some common ones, including the halos and the short carbon chain. Here are some of the larger alkyl substituents. All right, so here's our first molecule. So the first thing we need to decide is how big is the, the cyclic ring? And so in this case, I have one, two, three, four. So this is going to be cyclobutane. Now there's only one substituent, and this substituent has two carbon atoms. So this is ethyl, because there's only one substituent. I don't need a number. And so then this is just ethyl cyclobutane. All right. Uh, now we have two substituents, but again, the first thing to do is decide how big my ring is. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is cyclohexane. Now I have a bromo substituent and a fluoro substituent because the B in bromo becomes before the F in fluoro. This gets to be number one. So I have one, two, three, four. So then it's going to be one bromo. four fluoro, cyclohexane. All right, so here's one. Uh, I just have one substituent. Uh, my ring is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven is heptane, so it's going to be cycloheptane. Now, because there is only one substituent, I don't need a number, but I do need to figure out what this substituent is. And so this has one, two, three, four carbon atoms. And so uh, we know it's going to be butyl. And this is one of the two butyl substituents that I wanted you to know. This is where we have the T-shaped, where the middle of the T is, connect is where it connects to the cycloheptane. So this is tert butyl. So it's going to be tert butyl cycloheptane. All right, my last example. Uh, this is a hexagon ring. So again, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's going to make it cyclohexane. Now I have three substituents, but they're all the same. So I have a methyl and a methyl and a methyl. So that's going to make it trimethyl. But I need to decide on the numbering, right? And so I want the numbers to be as small as possible, right? So I think I'm going to start with this guy because I'm going to have one, two, three, four. Right? If I try to start with him, I, the best I can do is one, two, three, four. So it's much better to have the one and the two. So it's going to be one. 
two, right, let's put the numbers in, right? I've got one, two, three, four. So it's going to be one, two, four trimethyl cyclohexane. So I have one, two, four. Trimethyl cyclohexane. 